um, I don't want to like take a side on this, and I'm not gonna like scream yeah. like sources throughout this. I find it very, 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 very hard to believe that there are competitive male athletes with female levels of testosterone, just based on how I know testosterone functions. Listen up, guys. Have you ever been traveling in another country and you just want to watch your shows on Amazon Prime or listen to your music on YouTube and you can't do it because you're in the wrong spot in the planet? Can you believe that some people restrict your access to media that you've paid for based on your current geographic location? It's a damn crime. Well, here I am today to sell you on the idea, on the concept, on the revolution that is NordVPN, all right? Why would you allow major corporations to restrict your access to your own God-given media you've paid for with hours of your life that you'll never get back when you could just download NordVPN and change your location so that you can access your media like you ought to be able to. Holy this is actually so good. This is actually so good for a f***ing, or compared to what I'm used to. Damn, 260 down on a, through a VPN in Brazil. What if you're on an airplane? I was on an airplane once. I was on an airplane many times. And you just want to get on Discord and talk to the buds, okay? Guess what? You can't do that on a lot of Google Wi-Fi because they block Discord. Well, with NordVPN on my phone, I was able to log into NordVPN and go on Discord. Unless that's a crime um, for the federal government or if there's an FAA thing that says you can't do it. But regardless of that, I did it. I accessed what I needed to access because connecting to a VPN first allows you to get what you need to get, okay? Don't let evil ISPs get in the way of you and your content assuming your content is a content that law-abiding citizens would consume, okay? Don't let evil internet moderators ban you from forums, okay? And ban you from boards. Use VPN, get a new IP, get in there. NordVPN, exclamation mark Nord in the chat. Click the link below the video. Click that, get it. You get 70% off your three-year plan plus an additional month for free. Unbelievable. It's Nord, it's VPN. There it is, right here, okay? Get it, do it. Hey, hello, 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 hello. Wow, hello, 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 hello. <laughs> okay, uh, yeah, how are you doing? You all right, Stephen? Um, yeah, I'm doing great, how are you doing? Not bad. Um, how did this guy, how did this guy get you to, to do this? I'm, I'm confused. <laughs> I, I was just like, uh, he was like, I want to, I want to talk about the transport thing. Uh, and I was like, oh, I don't know. I don't really do that topic. Is And he was like, I could get Destiny to host. And I'm like, sure. If you can get Destiny to host, I'll do it. Mm. And then he, and then he did. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> no, he just emailed me. Yeah. I mean, if, it, if people want me to moderate conversations, I don't know. That's, I like it listening to him. It's fine, fine for me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's pretty easy. So now you know in the future. Free content. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> awesome. Okay. Uh, yeah. No, no offense, of course, Hound. I just, uh, yeah, totally cool. I don't know. I feel like this topic has been talked out, uh, honestly. But like, okay. it's. Uh, we can assure you that's not true. <laughs> well, I, that is that is your position, and you're welcome to convince me otherwise. Okay. So real quickly before we start. Um... The topic that we're going over I, I, is broadly just trans athletes. And then do each of you want to introduce yourselves, give your position, and then we can start chatting. And then, yeah. Um, go first, uh, uh, Vivian. Go. Sure, yeah. I mix Vivian Wolf on Twitch, Twitter, and YouTube. I do uh, generally historical and anti-fascist content on, uh, on Twitch, but uh, I'm also trans, so I get uh, roped into these conversations quite a lot too. Um, yeah, I think that's, I, th I think, oh, my position, uh, my position is that the, uh, current rules on, around gender segregation in sport are, uh, not good, actually. They are pretty unfair, but towards, uh, trans people, non-binary athletes, intersex, uh, trans men, and so on. Um, and that if we're going to have any kind of conversation around changing those, uh, changing those rules around segregation, uh, it should be done with inclusivity in mind, uh, with the with the idea of getting more people involved and able to compete in sport rather than excluding trans women from it because they are not a threat to cis women's sport. All right, the Hound, hit us up. Who are you? What's your position? Um, yeah. I go by uh, Hound the Forge on YouTube and Twitch. Um, I'm going to be streaming more regularly after this is released um my position is basically that um, in sports there's a breakdown of 
um, of these systems and physiological attributes used. Um, I think this breakdown is kind of goes into any aerobic and aerobic exercise. Um, I basically believe that um, I believe that the male advantage that is conferred from a cis male on puberty. Is it me or is he cutting out a lot? Um, a little bit. Wait, you said conferred for, from a cis male through puberty, and then what? And then that will give them an overwhelming advantage, um, even later in life, even when testosterone is um, out of their uh, system. Okay. All right. Who wants to? Do you want to? You guys can just talk. So basically, the way that I do this is I don't like take a side on the argument. If I feel like one of you guys is missing the point that the other person is saying, I'll try to help the other person clarify, or I'll try to get a response to the other person. Um, if you guys start calling each other names or shouting at each other, I'll step in, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Go hit yourselves up. Go for it. Sounds good. All right. Well, I mean, I guess I guess you'd have to, yeah, start by stating your um your premise and the and the evidence for your premise, like. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I almost want to just kind of like mm, a little preamble here and just say that um, because I don't want people coming and seeing this and thinking that I'm some kind of um, just transphobe. transphobe. Um, I know I probably won't convince many people beforehand, but I just think that like I believe in trans rights. I believe that trans people should have protections under the law and that should be they should be considered a protected class. Um, bigotry is real um, and damaging and a societal problem. So, um, yeah, and that's taken care of. Okay. Basically, um, I believe that uh, there is enough evidence to show that men um, or uh, males who go through male puberty um, have to go through um, their own puberty. Wait, hold um, on, wait, wait, real quick. Are you yeah, using you Are you using push to talk? Uh, no, I, I tried it, but it wasn't. Hold on one sec. Yeah, can we try, it again. try just for a sec? Because the mic is cutting out quite a bit now. Hold on. Okay. Yeah. But if I have to, uh, if I had to summarize your position, it would be that uh, people who go through a male puberty have, um, would you say, an unfair advantage in sport? Is that your, yes. like, in in system in sport? Okay. Yes. Cool. So, what do you mean by unfair? What makes it unfair? I'm just switching up. Can you still hear me, or is it still cutting out really bad? No, this sounds way better now. Yeah, that's much okay. better. You're not clipping out as much. Okay. Right. So, what I mean by unfair is that um, in the Olympics already, they have rules that basically state that you can't use PEDs, performance enhancing drugs. Yeah. Well, my kind of standard is is that um, if we look at kind of Basically, how much advantage is conferred from using a PED? Mm -hmm. um, if the level at which a um, being a well, um, to you doesn't bring you down to that level or lower, or lower, then it's not fair to allow them to compete um, in in the, the women's category. Doesn't bring you down to the level that is fair. So, what you're saying is that the um, the endogenous testosterone produced by uh, trans women during puberty uh, should be considered a PED. Um, yes, because that sounds like a really strange classification to me. It would mean that 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 is literally the only endogenous thing that we would ever consider to be a performance enhancing drug. You know the difference between endogenous and exogenous, right? Yes. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, so, uh, yeah, yeah. Wait, and clarifying so, for the audience. So endogenous, I'm guessing, is something produced within the body. Exogenous is something taken from without the body into the body? Yeah, okay. that's correct. Gotcha. Um, oh. <laughs> yeah, so that would be, like, the only thing. Um, and it seems it would be targeted, like, specifically at trans women. So you'd have to have a pretty high bar of evidence to suggest that this is, like create some degree of unfairness uh, okay, in order yeah. to like enact policies to remove trans women's right to uh, compete in sport. For sure, for sure. Okay, so I'll kind of uh, lay out my case a little bit better here. So um, the normal the normal adult male range for testosterone is between 7.7 .7 and 29.4 nanomoles mm -hmm. per liter. 75% um, of athletes found in a bunch of different studies are usually over 10 nanomoles per liter. 
Um, mm -hmm. We know that uh, for most females, it's 0.13 to 1.79 nanomoles per liter. So, um, and depending on what sport you're looking at, um, for power sports, there has been some studies that have shown that um, about. I so cut if, out again. Shows that yeah, about. Carry on. That about. Um, uh, About um, two nanomoles per liter is is a uh, level for. Oh, sorry, shit. Yeah, so it shows that about between seven and fifty percent. There's between seven and fifty times um, below the same amount of testosterone in uh, males All compared right. to females. Right. So okay. this is um, basically a beyond biological. Um, level. Okay. Of what you you'd expect a uh, normal uh, uh, or a uh, sure, athlete. but plenty of male plenty of male champion athletes have testosterone within the female range. Like this isn't the 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 performance enhancement conferred by testosterone isn't about the amount of testosterone in the blood. It's one of the reasons that I consider the um, current policies, in fact, to be pretty unfair is that it's about the amount of um, testosterone that the body uptakes, right? Like the amount you can use. Um, this is why you end up with people like uh, uh, like Castor Semenya, for example, who has like androgen... Uh, sorry, no, not Castor Semenya. Who am I thinking of? Ah, oh, crap. I can't think of an example off the top of my head. But um, this is why you end up with people who have like androgen insensitivity syndrome, for example. You can have like XY chromosomes have a, have a sort of normal male range of testosterone in the blood, but still be sort of phenotype. Typically, their physical attributes express as female um, because the body isn't uptaking all that testosterone in their blood. <clears throat> There's a huge correlation between the free testosterone in the blood and the amount of uptake, and so usually you see those together, right? Yeah, there is a there is a correlation between it, but it's um it's not. Uh, it's well, not it's unusual to see it not happening. Um, yeah, that. I'd say if you have yeah. more testosterone in the blood, your body's more likely to uptake more. Um, but like i said there's there are a number of like male athletes in in uh in elite sport who have uh very low testosterone blood levels and still like perform very very well because their uptake is extremely high um i don't want to like take a side on this and i'm not going to like scream yeah. like sources throughout this i find it very 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 hard to believe that there are competitive male athletes with female levels of testosterone just based on how i know testosterone functions um, it kind of sure, sounds like a I testosterone think. is like a meme, but I, it's definitely not. Like this is literally like what no testosterone are, isn't. Yeah. Testosterone isn't a meme. Mm -hmm. um, but your ability, it's not uh, It's the amount of testosterone in the blood mm -hmm. um, is is not the measure by which uh, it you know it works because you can have like testosterone in the blood that simply isn't being like used by the body for sure that's um, why if but, you go to like yeah. a male fertility yeah. clinic or some shit they can't just measure the testosterone and tell you if you have high or low t that's why they usually look for symptoms first if it's a responsible doctor right because just yeah, measure yeah, yeah. but I, I i don't know if there are male professional athletes that have female levels of testosterone in their blood that seems highly unlikely um, to me. right so no, yeah, no, no basically, I, would the, the, I would have to go and google sure. the, oh. fucking, the source for that okay but, sure all right go the, ahead. there's research there's research that shows that it is true in some sports the levels are extremely overlapping but that's why i kind of made a differentiation at the very beginning mm -hmm. between any aerobic sports because mm -hmm. more often than not the testosterone differences are very large in these specific sports which are the only sports I would can actually consider putting um, restrictions on trans athletes. Sure. Okay. Well, I didn't. I didn't hear you make that. I think your mic must have cut out when you were saying about uh, anaerobic sports. Right. So, by anaerobic, you're talking about stuff that isn't like running, swimming, etc. Yes. You're talking about uh, weightlifting and uh, so. Um, yeah, there's two forms of anaerobic um, kind of uh, uh, activity. Um, mm -hmm. So they say about a maximum of minutes of extreme vigorous exercise is like the limit after that it's pretty much um mostly aerobic okay so well so this would be like maximum a, a 200 meter dash you're thinking of running running um weightlifting shot put javelin throw uh, high jump long jump those kinds of things all right so like just bursts of strength rather than yeah mm -hmm. i got you um 
All right, and and so what's the what's the contention there? Because uh, trans women would have to keep their testosterone like at a level below. I think the I think the IOC puts it at either four or two nanomoles no. per liter, right? It's, For like it's two still, years. Yeah, the Olympic Committee is still at ten. They're trying to bring it back down to five, but they haven't actually All made right, that okay. decision yet. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So um, below ten nan nanomoles per liter right. for uh, for for two years, yeah. Okay, so I have a study, and um, it's not often looked at because it is a a, a mouse study. Um, but what they basically did is they took two female mice. They gave mm -hmm. one testosterone, another one sham pellets. They trained both of them for six weeks, mm -hmm. and they detrained them. They let them not train at all. For another six weeks, which came to almost a decade in human time, if you look at mm -hmm. the comparative lifespan, and they retrain them. And what they found is, without any testosterone, just normally, what they yeah. found is that the mice um, that had the uh, testosterone uh, that are in the testosterone condition, they had a thirty um, percent increase in power and muscle size compared to the mm -hmm. um, sham one. And so I kind of of this as saying like if you had gone through a period where you're training and you're going through um a typical cis male puberty um, this elevated testosterone would give you um basically what they're doing was growing more myonuclei which have been found benefits that last much longer essentially is what you're saying yeah, right? uh, yeah. They're, they're theorized to last um decades even a lifetime in most cases oh, okay yeah. so uh yeah so so why should i care uh, so basically, if I if we can see that um, people or athletes um, who have um, who have um, on that advantage, if that advantage overshadows um, the advantage you gained or is near it to the advantage you gained from taking a certain kind of steroid or something like that, then that's mm. basically again um, to. I mean, I see. I I simply I simply reject the idea that like uh, having a male puberty is anything like uh, taking a PED. You could probably make the argument like maybe uh, philosophically or whatever that there's some kind of um, there's some kind of analogy there, perhaps. Um, but to say it's like it would be would be to validate those accusations of like cheating against uh, trans women who uh, who compete in sport um, well, and. It's, we, it's we already demonstrably that. not because they're not taking like an exogenous uh, substance to increase their performance. If anything, they're taking an exogenous substance which decreases their performance, right? Uh, yeah, for sure. But I think the um, so would you be um, okay with athletes that have um, um, or actually, I think you already answered this question, but basically that have um, genetic advantages, which are um, abnormal, and then give them an extreme advantage in some kind of discipline like uh, Michael Phelps. I know he had a uh, yeah, genetic disorder. I'm, I'm totally okay with that. Sports is inherently kind of like unfair, if you like, right? Because, mm -hmm. uh, because yeah, the entire the entire point of like going and doing training is to gain a like unfair competitive advantage, or at least a competitive advantage over your opponents, right? Like yeah. how how much time you have in the day available to be able to train could be considered an unfair competitive advantage. Like, so you have to demonstrate. I think that the the unfair competitive advantage that is conferred from male puberty is so drastic, right? That it that it removes the ability for like any other athletes outside of that category to compete, and um, even then, I mean, we still allow Michael Phelps to compete. So, what is it specifically about the the male puberty that makes it exceptional compared to like any other kind of competitive advantage that somebody might have either through genetics or just through life circumstance? Well, again, I'd go back to the differences, the innate differences between um, cis uh, um, um, women and men's um, testosterone amounts. And when you kind of look at that, if you have a training advantage um, that you have this much amount of extra testosterone, that would never be um, achievable um, cool. by a female athlete, then that's just, you just have that much more um, advantage throughout your body through the rest of your life. Right. Um 
yeah, I mean, I'm not convinced that this advantage confers the same as a cis male's advantage over a, over a woman when you're taking that. Um, okay. Because because trans trans women athletes don't just like uh, have testosterone during puberty and then come off the testosterone. They like actively take estrogen to like lower those levels. They lose muscle yeah. mass. Like there is no yeah for yeah. sure. But okay, then you do you deny the study that I that I, that I told you about before? Where... I mean, we were talking about a couple of mice, one yeah, right. of which was given yeah. testosterone, and then they were kind of like left alone right without the exogenous testosterone and like the uh, the mouse that was given testosterone had some advantages that were conferred for like uh, you said possibly up to decades longer right yeah. and there's theorized uh, but lifetime this as well. theorized to be for the lifetime yeah sure but so like, would you be more uh, receptive to a study that was um done on humans like if they showed the same finding in humans what would you what, think about what i would yeah i mean in humans it would probably be uh, a lot more relevant for sure um okay. i am aware of a couple of studies that have been done with humans who have been uh like uh who have been through transition and that they're they sort of end up placing around the same sort of position right okay. pre and post transition generally okay. I have some yeah. examples of the opposite happening if you want to go over them. Sure. So uh, Laurel Hubbard is probably one that yeah. pretty much everyone knows. Um, oh, basically, um, before she competed, um, she actually had the uh, men's 105 division um, world record for New Zealand with a mm -hmm. snatch of 135 kilograms, clean and jerk 170, total 300 kilograms. Cool. Um, so her... she had the men's record before transitioning. Right. So um, she okay. transitioned. Yes. Yes. Now yeah. her, I guess I'll tell you her overall was just 285. Um, so her previous record was 300. And that's a uh -huh. 15 kilogram total drop, which is a 5% performance drop. Uh -huh. So then we go to, there's another paper here that looked at the comparative differences between um, athletes and sports. What they uh -huh. found was that between um, males and females, um, there was a 36.8% um increase or um, difference between the two right so basically what i'm saying is that the percentage of drop which happened um, um to laurel hubbard um through the transitioning process wasn't enough to... this is an av this is an average difference though right like the 36 percent between like men and women in uh weightlifting is like yeah. averaged across all people yeah uh, uh no 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 it's not it, it, it's done no? by no, it's done by um, the uh, records of uh, the sport. They compare the records over the years. Oh, right. So, like, the, the, the highest achievable. The highest achievable, yeah. Yeah, okay, cool. So, Laurel Hubbard has, like, a 5% per, uh, performance drop. How long was it between her uh, initial transition and, um, and like, when she competed to get the new, uh, the new record? Um, she the was, I think she was around 20. So, she probably actually wasn't at her peak um, when she was... She got that record she actually transitioned at 34 years old i'm pretty sure yeah i think what vivian yeah. was asking or my understanding is she was um asking how long was her transition before she started setting female records like did she transition on monday and then friday set the woman's record or did she wait i think it's usually two years is like the recommended transition time it's been eight years um and this is her current stats gotcha mm. yeah that's pretty impressive um yeah, again, I mean, I just have to be, like, I don't I don't know why this is, like, a major issue. Uh, Laurel Hubbard's been barred from competing anyway. Like, and we do do this sometimes when we, when we have people who do have such a, like, competitive advantage, like, they will change the rules, right? Like, with, um, what was it, Kobe Bryant, I think? Um, they changed some of the rules in NBA for him, if I'm not mistaken been a while since i looked into this to be honest uh, i'm not exactly sure yeah. but uh, do you want to go over another example i have one more kind of yeah sure, sure. so right. do you know cc tepler no. um oh. she was yeah, a c a a yeah no can you hear me yeah yeah go go uh, okay. uh, how do you spell her name uh c e e c e l f e r sorry say that again c e e c e c e all oh, right. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Tefler. T E L F E R. Yeah. Yeah. I've got you. Yeah. So, um, 
before she transitioned in 2016 um, in the hurdles, she ranked 200th place and then 390th in 2017. Then uh -huh. um, after she transitioned, I think she waited a year or uh, a year and a half. Mm -hmm. um, and she is consistently um, either coming in the top 10 or like top several places. Okay. Um, and when I looked at her actual scores, her 400 hurdle competing pre-transition was 57.34 seconds. Post, yeah. it was 57.53. So that's a 0.33% difference. Mm -hmm. um, for her 60 meter personal, um, her personal best was um, pre-transition 7.67. Post, it was 7.63. Uh -huh. That's a 0.5 difference. And then for 400 meter, um, Mr. Pure 400 meter was 55.77 pre. Um, 54.41 posts with 0.4% difference. Okay, so you got uh, two examples of um, trans women coming through who uh, perform, uh, like outperform cis women or outperform, I, I don't know how to, how to, no, that's it, not, actually. that's not, not like... actually my, yeah, that's not my contention. My contention is that sure. basically um, where they were um, pre transition mm -hmm. and athletic ability um, doesn't fully. Um, transition over post transition. Sure. Um, what you're saying is some some benefits from male puberty remain, and I've no, I, I, so I think the yeah. broad, so the broad argument I think is he's saying there is a X percent difference between the yeah. average um, elite male and female cis male cis female athlete. Um, but when we yeah. look at some of the highest performing male to or f uh, male to female. Um, trans athletes, the percentage difference mm -hmm. between their abilities and the elite male athletes is much, much, much smaller. Is based on the two examples I think we've heard thus far. Seems to be the argument. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So there's no. Um, so there's a competitive advantage that like transfers over. That's right. fine. I get. I get. That. I, I, I've I never. I, yeah. I've never contended that that doesn't exist. I think. I. Right. You know. The. Uh, um, the advantages. Uh, are fuck. I've never contended that that doesn't exist. Um, what I have contended is that like it isn't really a problem, right? Like yeah. uh, Laurel Hubbard is like is like one trans woman. She's not yeah. like uh, she's not like there are multiple other like categories in which women are doing perfectly fine, right? Like she just she well, just and... like one 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 area. She did like the the clean and jerk, and I think it was was it the deadlift? I forget. I but yeah. Deadlift, yeah, yeah, yeah. And so, um, like, but this hasn't precluded other other women from competing at all, right? Right. Well, that's why my standard is um, PEDs. So if I, if you kind of, I'm trying to show here that basically the level advantage that was conferred from uh, male puberty uh, was beyond that, or that you would have gotten from, or that any other athlete would have gotten from taking um, a PED. Okay. So if we care about PEDs, if we care about PEDs in the yeah. sport, then we why care about, we care, we about, care about PEDs because PEDs can be like particularly widespread, right? And that it would it would force essentially every athlete no to take one will PEDs in order to compete. Thanks, Debs. Whereas like trans women are such a small part of the population, such a small part of the elite sporting population that like <clears throat> having one trans woman who like wins fairly regularly like doesn't actually do that much to the sport in general, right? It doesn't. It doesn't like take away from um, women in general. Like, I mean, if it depends, like th then I don't know. It depends on what your values of sport are. Like, if you believe that the value of or what someone called it tolerable um, unfairness mm -hmm. is a thing, then you should kind of be second guessing about this. Like, I think that if you say that this level is okay, then you shouldn't be. Um, upset if a low-ranked or mid-ranked athlete takes a, um, a PED and then doesn't come in first place or whatever, but bumps their self up significantly. Well, like I said, the problem with that is you have this sort of like rule utilitarian um, uh, argument, right? Where you say that like um, PEDs are like a thing that all cis women could do in sport, right? Like, right. whereas being a trans woman is not a thing that all cis women could do in sport, right? Uh, yeah, for sure. But I mean, we're not. And so, um... and so you sort of like initiate the rules so that like PEDs don't take over the sport. Whereas like there's currently no, um, there's currently no threat of like trans women taking over the sport. 
Currently. Well, I'm not I'm not afraid of, of trans women uh, taking over the sport, but just right. I think that it's a genuine unfairness if um if uh, trans women come into the sport and say they're not even like dominating, but just getting like places where um they had a conferred advantage where they wouldn't have gotten it um um pre transition in the 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 previous category they're involved in. Right. Yeah. I mean, like I said to you already, I agree that like um. Um, male puberty can confer in some sports a competitive advantage post transition. Um, I just, I, I honestly don't see how this is different from any other like competitive advantage, and also, I don't see it as currently like any great threat to the to the structure. Right? It's not like forcing uh, cis women out of the sport. Cis women are still competing. We don't have like all trans women podiums like. That's, okay. That's I mean, if, a, if, if not a thing that happens, right? I mean, if, right. If, but if that's your if that's your level of uh, kind of concern, then well, yeah. I mean, it actually... comes down it comes down to your your sort of like concept of fairness, right? Like, yeah, the yeah. point of fairness the point of fairness isn't to make sure that absolutely everybody has no competitive advantage whatsoever. The point of fairness is that, like, you know, that people are able to compete at the highest level, right, with others. And that they can um, that they can appear and have a presence in that sport, because there will always be people who have that great uh, genetic advantage, like we talked about with uh, Phelps and so on, right? Oh, okay, um, but yeah. I would be someone who would say that I would be someone who would say that Phelps um, should be should basically do everything that's technologically possible to level out someone who has an unbridgeable advantage. So people Why? like. Because that, that invalidates the concept of fairness, at least, which I hold and which I think the Olympics itself holds, like what general sports fairness holds. Um, sure. I mean, I, I, I'm not sure about the concept of fairness as, as described by the uh, Olympic Committee. Um, I was just, I was literally trying to fucking find a definition from them earlier uh and it's really difficult to get like a solid definition of what they mean when they say fairness uh in general they don't they they try and stray away from the use of that word uh except in describing why the policy is important they say you know it's in order to ensure fairness in sport but they have no like solid definition of what that is um and so it, it comes down well, I can, to I can, I can... I can yeah. give you a definition from from um, I can give you a definition from uh, the World Anti Doping. Um, sure. Okay. Yeah. Basically, uh, what they say is, um, so the list of banned drugs and performance enhancing enhancing methods are registered and what blah 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 blah. Um, there's three criteria: potentially performance enhancing, potentially harmful to the athlete's health, and violates yeah. the spirit of sport. The spirit of sport. Spirit of sport. Now I know that's super vague mm -hmm. and, uh, and arbitrary, yeah. but I think that's something that you're not fully um, caring about enough. Um, well, I mean, what I care about is like the ability for people to be included in sport, right? Okay. So, like, for example, if you were to say, uh, if we were to take your your argument to its logical conclusion, right, and say that like trans women are banned from competing in um, like women's sports that are like women's aerobic sports right, right. um sorry anaerobic sports anaerobic, right, right. yeah um then then you would essentially say that trans women are banned from competing in those sports right without yeah. like without like completely restructuring how sport works currently well i actually don't think so um i would propose a uh woman's unregulated um category just just tagged on where any athlete who wants to compete in there and is legally uh, a woman do it uh-huh but i mean that's that's but why <laughs> like 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 because i said currently it doesn't seem yeah and so when yeah, the unregulated I'm... category essentially just be like you aren't you just making a trans only category at that point no the, no, the point is that a cis women who uh cis women who want to compete with the trans women can do it it's unregulated all you have to do is, is legally be um Woman. Well, but like, let's say that you want to like win awards or like be at the top of your division. Why would you ever go into if you're saying that we need to create this division because it's harder, which is the only so the only reason we need to create this division is that there's an unfair grouping that's happening. If there is an unfair grouping, why would people choose to move from their what you consider a fair grouping to the unfair one where they don't have an advantage? 
wouldn't it literally just be um, a trans only category effectively? I think there are actually a lot of athletes. There are a lot of athletes that would show solidarity with the the, um, the uh, trans movement. And I think the problem is kind of a consent thing here. If if uh, female athletes want to compete with 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 trans athletes, I think that they have the right to do that. And I think a lot of them actually okay. would. So why don't we do that with like uh, black athletes as well? We should probably move black athletes to the uh, to that unregulated no. thing as well, right? Because uh, no. seems seems like especially in running for example like we should probably have a category like that where like black black athletes can compete in the running category uh yeah. the open running category and then we just leave like cis white athletes in the in the sort of like uh other running category the official women's running category no because there's no um inherent advantage in black athletes that is not achievable by other males of other races are you sure about that yeah <laughs> Have you looked? Have you looked into the? Have you looked into the statistics around like, um, like how many black athletes come like really fucking high in uh, placement in running? I agree, like, but I'm or... not. I agree, but I'm not talking about um, outcome. I'm talking about ability, ability to. Reach yeah, no, that there level. seems to be there seems to be a significant um, genetic advantage for for certain ethnicities uh, within running. Right. On average, yeah, on average, but not absolutely. I would caution I mean, that. Not just... on average. I don't yeah. know if that's necessarily if it's significant genetic ability, um, but there may be some. Yeah, just that word is a little yeah. scary. But go ahead. Yeah, I no, think I mean, that you're it's... trying to draw the, you're trying to trying to draw a distinction where there isn't one. I I think that the um the quantitative difference um is so large that it goes over the level of fairness that we hold to, which is um, PEDs. Okay. Well, so here, real quick, for this analogy. So what Vivian is saying is like, let's, okay, so let's say that we had a certain um, activity. Let's say that we had a certain, um, did you say the um, an anaerobic activity is where the biggest advantage is present, right? I imagine? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So uh, the, the largest, um, let's say that you had an anaerobic activity and in that anaerobic activity, let's say 95% of the, the people that were taking medals and winning were uh, trans women, right? You, you would say that that's probably a problem, I imagine, right, uh, mm -hmm. Hound? Yep. Yeah. So if we say that same thing exists um, now, you're not saying that all trans women will be at all cis women or that no cis women could ever win first. They could, but there would still be a significant advantage there on average. So what Vivian is saying, well, let's look at certain like um, e even certain aerobic events or I think sprinting, even sprinting, I think would be considered an aerobic event. Um, mm -hmm. If we look at something like sprinting um, and we see that the majority of the winners there are... Um, Kenyan, right? I think in the Olympics are, are typically the ones that do the best there. Like 95% of the winners there Amazing. are Kenyan. Do you think there should be some separation there, a different category created from them? Because they seem to have some, even if it's just a slight genetic advantage there, that gives them an edge at the top. My kind of thing, again, I'd go back to the fact that the male to, to, to female testosterone difference is um, unbridgeable. And there's no average genetic difference between the Kenyans and any other race that isn't unbridgeable. There'll always be an athlete that could that level whether or not they come out in performance i mean the the actual biological mechanism wait can you explain that again so basically um if a trans athlete goes through male puberty they have between seven to even possibly 20 more times the amount of testosterone this isn't um, achievable but it's not even in the same range um for a uh, cis athlete so what I'm saying is that the difference is, is that for the um, Kenyan athletes, there is no level which they have which isn't logically achievable by any other race. Do we care more about the hormones or more about the results? Like, let's say that everything you're saying is true, even in, in humans, but let's say that trans athletes just aren't really, let's say that about 1% of the population is trans. And let's say when we start looking across all like Olympic medal winners and top place finishers, let's say about 1% of them are trans. Would, do you think it's still a problem at that point? Uh, depends on, I mean, depends on how high up, I mean, you just go back down to the rules. I understand we're doing kind of like a utilitarian of weighing the, the the cost and the benefit here but i feel like uh sports itself are kind of based on a the ontological framework of like, this is the kind of the rules that we have we kind of want to 
professional. Well, yeah. So I so a vague I, spirit of sport. That's what you're talking about. Basically. Yeah. So just to to clarify, so what Vivian's original point was that you're you're saying you're taking this approach to where there's like a spirit of rule in the game, and what I, what Vivian's argument is is that you've chosen to draw this distinction around um, levels of androgen. But we could theoretically pick, rather than hormones, we could pick some genetic markers and, and put a barrier around that as well. Um, the example that I give that I think is a little bit uh, more tangible would be height in the NBA. Like, should there be yeah. different groupings of height in the NBA? Um, because it seems to be more competitive when you're taller and you don't really have, aside from getting proper nutrition as a child, and even that arguably you don't control, um, you don't really have much control over that. So, uh, so Vivian's question is, why draw it over androgen versus any other random genetic marker? Why pick a hormone instead of a, a, a gene or something? Is, yeah. oh, okay, okay. So, um, okay, so because, and what I was explaining is that there is no height that I say, if you're going to do it, break it down by race, that a black athlete could get to that mm -hmm. radically a white athlete couldn't get to. Yeah, but you can't, okay, but, jeez. <laughs> but we're talking about the difference between like short and tall people here. And we're not talking about like the difference between white and black people now, right? Like height is a good example that Destiny used. I went for the most fucking like controversial one, but like obvious, obviously it seems that in the N NBA, like height is incredibly fucking important, right? Like no five foot four fucking person is going to be competing in the NBA. Well, careful, um, it happens. It's just very, very, very rare. Just, you know, getting okay, a technicality. Fair right, enough. So. Okay. <laughs> I, I I can't think of any five foot four person in the NBA, but maybe I maybe I don't know enough about the NBA. Um but like but like it's incredibly important, right? So um this means that you've got a whole class of people that are basically unable to compete entirely, right? Um, simply because of like their their genetic characteristics, right? Things that are unchangeable, immutable. You can't train to get taller, right? So like, why why make this distinction around height and not around um sorry make this distinction around uh... where I don't have what do I set here to make them plant to to make them cut trees is is it not plant cut what is it I don't I don't see chop wood here fucking idiots so yeah, I believe that the testosterone I matters I, I honestly think the degree of impact is like much greater in terms of in terms of height right like the mm. idea that somebody who's like who's like less than like less than six foot is probably much less likely to be able to compete in the nba than a cis woman for example is able to compete in any sport that like trans women are competing in do you think do you think there's like a 36 percent? you said something like that right with weightlifters do you th uh, there's like a 36 percent um difference between like cis males and cis females what do you think is the Hello? difference in performance what Hello? whoa holy shit what was that oh sorry you guys Okay. Oh, you go, you go. <laughs> Fucking gave me a heart attack. Shit. I um, <laughs> Thought I uh, muted. I I mean I mean it's very difficult to like quantify, but do you honestly think that the difference between somebody who is like five foot five, uh, sorry, people who are five foot five and people who are like uh, higher than seven foot in the NBA, do you think that the mm. the difference in performance in general there is like thirty six percent, or do you think it's probably much higher? Oh, I see. Okay, okay, okay. I I see what you're doing here. You're you're focusing on the individuals. Um, that's why we're. That's why this whole conversation is. I'm not focusing on... on the individuals. I'm focusing on the groups. The 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 group of people who are like who are like I don't know. Let's say five foot six and below, and the group of people who are seven foot and above. Right? Do you think okay. there's a difference in general in their performance in the NBA? Right? Of like yeah. thirty six percent, or do you think it's probably much higher? It's likely much higher, it's for sure much higher. Right. Okay. I I, I agree. We Not... probably don't have stats on this, but I think it's pretty clear to see that it would be much higher, right? Right. So why would so so why don't we say that like um you know we need a different division for people of uh, all different heights um and a different yeah. I mean I don't know I guess uh for basketball it'd be hard because uh they're shooting and there are tons of people who are shorter who play can shoot well but i'm just thinking of a sport where this wouldn't be the case where you just had a jump dunk or something like that um I, hmm. sorry i don't what are what you're gonna have to repeat your point there i don't understand what you just said i just meant that like you can be a good nba player and be short because of the shooting factor you can be really good at shooting and you don't need to be tall right 
Well, I mean, not. I mean, not really, mm, right? Like I, that might uh, be true. Like that might be true, maybe in a in very very one offs. But in general, I think the average height of an NBA player, I want to say, is like six five. It's insanely tall. Definitely super tall. Yeah, hundred percent. Oh, sorry, can you repeat your question again? I'm just trying to wrap my head around it. Six foot okay. seven. Sorry. Go ahead. Okay, really simply, right? Yeah. The group of people that are five foot five and below, and the group yeah. of people that are seven foot and above. The advantage between the uh, the the difference in performance between them, right, is I think we both agree much larger than the difference between trans women and cis women in any sport, right? Right. Right. Okay. Cool. As long as we agree with that premise. Right. So I just think that you drawing the line at that is kind of cherry picking. I mean, why is it not cherry picking when you when you're talking about testosterone? Uh, because there are two, there are two kind of distinct groups we're looking at here with um, like averages. I can I can see two distinct groups: people who are less than five foot six and people who are greater than seven foot. Those are two distinct groups. You can definitely like that's that's a solid freaking line that you can divide people into. Okay, but now we're not talking about elite athletes. We're just talking about random people in the street, right? Why would we? I that. mean, we're not talking about elite athletes right now because everybody five foot five, five foot six and below, or the vast majority of people five foot six and below, just literally cannot compete at all, right? If you're five foot six in college and you're like, I really want to be a basketball player, and you train really, really fucking hard, chances are you're still probably not going to make it, right? Right. Whereas, like, if you're seven foot and above and you train really, really fucking hard, you're you're much more likely to make it, right? Right. Yeah. That's true. Cool. So what we're saying is that people who are five foot six and below are basically shut out of the NBA, pretty much. Um, whereas cis women don't seem to be shut out of any of these sports, right? So it seems it seems much more um, much more pressing to Dang, me just... to to start making new categories based around height because height seems to have much more of an effect on sport than like. Depending on the sport. Yeah. And I know we're just using the NBA as an example here, but like there's other sports in which height has uh, plays a particularly uh, large advantage as well. Things like the high jump and so on. I, I had a list a couple of months ago, but yeah. <laughs> like I say, I haven't talked about this for a while. All my evidence yeah. is all over my computer. <laughs> I understand your point. You're yeah, not saying... I understand your point. I just don't. Oh, you understand it. Okay. I cool. understand it. I just don't understand of why this is um completely relevant so what vivian is saying is that you've drawn a distinction around um androgen or testosterone that this is the thing that you're taking an issue with there you've identified two groups we call them roughly male and female that have different levels of androgen and you think that there ought to be a separator here to keep sports fair but it looks like in the purposes of say long distance running we could draw um groups around like kenyans and non-kenyans or for basketball, we could draw um, circles around people that are above 6'4 and below 6'4. Um, and that in some of these cases, the advantages on those people seem even more extreme. That the chances of a cis woman beating a trans woman is actually much higher than a basketball team full of 5'5 five five players against 6'7 players. So the question is, what is the justification for creating entirely different divisions um, based on the androgen thing when we wouldn't do the same for different races in long distance running or different heights of people in basketball playing, I guess, would be the question. Um, I, again, all I would say is that the, the quantitative difference um, between... Um, uh, a trans woman and cis woman and testosterone kind of um for some reason your argument isn't salient i don't know why it's just not picking up with me but it doesn't seem like it's it's a it's practical in any way to the, to the situation or how things actually are right now well so an, uh, an analog to how it can be practical is in combat sports we usually have weight classes couldn't we instinct um instill like more of those classes across almost every single sport like for instance why don't you have height classes in the nba why don't you have a 5-5 to 5-8 league and then like a 5-9 to 6-2 league and like a 6-3 to 6-7 league kind of like how or for marathon running why don't we have like a kenyan league an ethiopian league an american league yeah 
I haven't actually thought about this at all. I just, I just don't see why we, and, and if you, and if you agree with the statement, for example, right, that like trans women are women, which I assume from your disclaimers at the beginning, that you, that you do agree with that, right? Um, and the, and the, you know, the IOC and the various uh, sports organizations also agree with that because they determine basically sex based on your legally recognized gender in the country, uh, in your country of residence. Um, then like when you're not talking about somebody taking an ex exogenous substance right when they're not when they're not deliberately cheating in order to gain this competitive advantage when they are in fact taking exogenous substances which reduce their performance ability i can't see how you can say you know well we should exclude them because of this particular genetic factor they're still women so you've got to have you've got to have like uh, a good reason that this genetic factor is more important to you than any other genetic factor. I guess just the like the raw ability which it conveys on an individual would be the most important thing in my in but my. We've just uh, right, so real quick, yeah. So we're restating yeah. that argument. The raw ability yeah. it conveys. There's a raw ability conveyed by height. There seems to be some raw ability conveyed by uh, maybe certain races and like certain types of like athletic events, like. I mean that's my point, right? We've just we've just demonstrated that like other genetic um, components confer a much greater advantage. So if we're not regulating those, why is this one? Why is this particular one that you want to regulate special? Let's see. I haven't actually thought about this. Um, I really don't know how to respond. Um, I, okay, so I have a question for Vivian. Would you have a problem if we got to the point to where 50 to 70% of all of the women's, cis women's, I'd just say women's world records started to be held by trans women? Do you think that that would become problematic? Yes. Um, if we were to reach that point, let's say that we, um, so we're going down a hypothetical road. Let's mm -hmm. say that we have um, normalized trans... I mean, I already I already have a problem with how like sports is done at the moment anyway, right? I think that... Sure, the, but we the, have to the, work. We're not going to dismantle all sports, right? We, it's a part of culture. It's probably here to stay for the foreseeable Yeah, no, future. I don't want to dismantle yeah. all So we have to work sports. within, whether we think it's dumb or yeah. not, we have to work within that um, confine. Um, so if we if we accept trans women into all forms of women's sports if we reach an area in the future where say like 40 i mean i'm not going to hold you to a particular number like oh well at 15.7 yeah, yeah but let's say sure. we get to like 10 percent, 20 percent, 30 percent, and it's starting to look like holy shit trans women are fucking destroying cis women in sports like they're beginning to become a big record holder even 25 percent would be pretty significant yeah. given how small trans are at least a percentage of the population at that yeah, point that happened do you like so do you just desegregate them or, or no, I'm sorry. Do you just segregate and be like, okay, well, never mind. You guys are all out. Your records are invalidated. Like how, how do you deal with it at that point? Well, yeah, I mean, I would already argue that the rules that we currently have are unfair. Right. And that those, the, if we were to make significant changes to the rules, like um, that would, that would stop that from like ever happening. I don't think that that's a, that's a likely um, thing to happen anyway. Uh, but let's say let's say the amount of trans people keeps increasing and suddenly it's like 50 percent of the population and you know they're hitting all the fucking podiums in the women's category mm -hmm. uh, and cis women can't compete then absolutely right because okay. my because my whole position from the very beginning has always been that if we are to uh, talk about how to segregate sport in a different way uh, we should do it from a point of inclusivity right currently cis women are not being excluded from sport um i believe trans women actually are being excluded from sport um well inclusivity along with if we go by our earlier things like inclusivity in and of itself isn't usually a worthy goal that's usually something that's serving another end do you agree with that or disagree with that well, I, you have to agree with this uh, because my, if you say you disagree, that I'm going to say should we be, should we be more inclusive of every single weight class competing against every other weight class, like in a combat sport? Right. And people would say, well, okay, no. In that case, being disclusive or excluding people from certain competitions is probably a good thing. Or should all female and male sports be mixed together? Well, no, it's probably good right. to have some level of separation there, right? Um, so I'm not sure about the all female and male sports being mixed together. Uh, in all honesty, um, I think there's a possibility that 
that could be done if you think had across, like well, certain weight classes or if you had certain like leagues or whatever but like it's a very yeah it's pretty complicated show. yeah the, it might be possible um, but you would have to start drawing way more restrictions in order yeah, to make yeah, that exactly. work right like the worst yeah. male nba team could probably destroy the best female wnba team like 30 times like it would be an insane probably yeah mostly from the height difference actually sure yeah <laughs> or even it, i mean it's been demonstrated in, in tennis as well right um <clears throat> but so yeah so it seems like some level of exclusion is probably good to make sports somewhat competitive um for different yeah reasons. i mean but it's exclusion in the name of inclusion right the reason that we exclude certain um certain categories uh, certain people from a category mm -hmm. is in order that other people can compete right yeah it's it's always in the name of inclusivity right it's always in the name of like having the maximum the maximal amount of people being able to compete not everybody mm -hmm. right yeah. but the maximal amount of people being able to compete mm -hmm. um yeah so so yeah so your the answer to your question is yes if trans women started dominating uh, i would i would be okay with a with a new league and that new league would actually have a chance of fucking succeeding at that point as well right mm -hmm. if you've got all champion like trans athletes and there's shitloads of them around then maybe you could have another league but currently if you're talking about separating trans women out into another league you're talking about removing them from sport entirely because there's just not enough trans women athletes in order to make that league in order to even put together a fucking race when it comes to things like cycling and so on right yeah like yeah I so think there's about I, I think there's a about question. twenty trans cyclists, and only like two or three of them are coming in like high placings. Mm -hmm. Yeah. W where is your line, or like the level at which you'd be like, okay, I'm uncomfortable with level of kind of trans position in sport. I mean, it's hard to like put an exact line on it, like we said earlier, but I think, um, but. But yeah, I mean, it would they they'd have to be pretty dominant, right? You you'd have to like start seeing podiums where it's like all trans women and no cis women are like ever included. You'd have to see, um, you know, instead of just seeing a trans woman win once, like in the case of uh, Dr. Rachel McKinnon with the with the cycling thing, and then lose like the next eleven races, they would have to be consistently winning every single race all the time. Um, and and that would have to be like across the entire sport with with trans okay. women involved. I right? just I yeah I just say my, my line is less far than yours. Well, I guess. your I line mean... seems to be if some trans women win some of the time, then that's oh. bad. Which seems well, no, it's that, yeah. it's that it's, because... it's, I think that there's, there's mechanistic mechanistic like physiological reasons why they would have an advantage beyond I don't know, taking a drug or something like that, and then like because of that fact. <laughs> It's just they'll get higher places than they would have. Yeah, but again, we're going, we're restating the position. The same could be said about height. Yeah. There's a lot of people that yeah. would be way yeah, worse at basketball that if they were a different height, right? Or or people that would be way worse at swimming if their body composition was slightly different, like the mm -hmm. length of their torso compared to their legs or their arms, right? That they have no control over, right. that others have no control over. I wonder what a short people's league would look like in basketball, honestly. <laughs> be good at shooting, probably. Yeah, it could be interesting. <laughs> sure. it would definitely change the nature of the game right like the game would like completely change in the way that people play it for oh, sure yeah. yeah okay yeah, well, sorry yeah, that was, that's, that's, that's just a side note anyway <laughs> yeah, that was pretty much everything i less had yeah okay you have anything else that you want uh questions you want to find out like quicker. um i mean I mean, no, not really. Just, just that, just that. If trans women are women, they should be able to compete in women's sport, right? And if you're going to exclude them for this, for this reason of like, um, like something that their body produces naturally, then it's got to be. You've got to have that consistent policy across all uh, naturally occurring like things within somebody's body, right? Mm. Yeah. So, but so, so you wouldn't consider something where. It's like it's actually not naturally occurring for cis women to have testosterone levels level uh, levels higher than two uh, nanomoles per liter. Like you wouldn't find that be an unnatural. I mean, it, is, it does it's... naturally occur though. What are you uh, talking? Not in like forty six XX cis women like the 
You mean, like, like you mean inter- no, 40, no 46XX woman has uh, testosterone levels of over 2 nanomoles per litre? Well, not a 2 nanomoles per litre, but like that's like the 99 percentile. Like, I mean, to go above would... that is usually hyper- hypogonadism, and, and that's like a form of intersex. I mean, some of the time, yeah. 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 But I mean, we still consider those intersex people women, right? Like, yeah, yeah, 100%. Sure. But uh, I would so also, not, and, yeah, I would also put, I would also say that they. So they you want to divide people up by chromosomes? No, no, no. By, okay. uh, for, by <laughs> for advantage, performance advantage that conveys from testosterone. That specifically conveys from testosterone. Yes. See, I would much rather divide people up by by just advantage, right? Like by by the combined advantage of all of their genetic traits, right? That like places them in a particular category, like in a particular kind of broad category of performance. I would much rather divide them up in that way, rather than specifically focusing upon like height or or uh, endogenous testosterone or whatever. I would much rather divide people up by just performance, and I don't think yeah. there's any reasonable justification to focus in on specifically the Bird, testosterone LOL, that they once had in their bonus meme bitch chat ducker z yeah. bonus well, bonus that, meme I, I xq c lost to a be pep a laugh that grow from having testosterone in your body and training proceeds throughout your life. Yeah, 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 and and none of these the advantage conferred by height continues throughout your life as well. You know, it's pretty rare for a right. person to like get significantly shorter during out during their lifespan. So yeah, I guess there's just there's just no such thing as like a height um growth machine which people could just use. Whereas there are things like steroids oh, which man. athletes do use and which are banned. You can give somebody I HGH mean, as they're growing up to give them. Yeah, could do that. Uh, that. That would also be wrong, right? I mean, not necessarily, right? Because if they don't have any of it in their blood by the time they get to, uh, you know, yeah, by the time they get specific. to competing, like, they're not going to be picked up on any doping tests or whatever. Take H- HDS during puberty. Okay. But that, um, would be, that would be an exogenous substance as well, yeah. Well, what if, uh, like, uh, a bunch of different parents spread out over the world decided to, like, get a doctor to if their children have like genetic advances in sports the children go to play the sports and then they find out that they had some kind of innate advantage given to them which is unachievable by the general population what would you think of that i mean that's sort of in a roundabout way how they do scouting for um for athletes in college now isn't it like, like they go and they 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 look for people who are like the best of the best in the collegiate level, and then they then they take them to professional, right? Yeah, but, but I'd say yeah, yeah like you know, but like, like the, the doctor QC. advantage Fuck that they give them is something that's not biologically achievable. Oh, what they get a doctor to go and give them a substance which gives them yeah a, yeah yeah no, I don't I I I wouldn't be for that obviously. My my oh. point my point is I don't I think it's wrong. For example, with the case of Casta Semenya, you know about her, right? The uh, she had a disorder of sexual development, I believe. Um, I believe it was X Y gonadal dysgenesis, but I can't. Didn't release. Yeah, X U C lost to a B can't even C D dot G G. Um, bonus me or you are whoop a Y A Y A. So she naturally produced like uh, more testosterone and uptook more testosterone than sort of the average cis woman, right? right. Um, and the IOC and the IAAF like saw fit to exclude her from sport on that basis, um, unless she took substances to reduce her um, ability to compete, essentially. Um, and and I'm kind of against that violation of somebody's like autonomy to that degree. I believe that, as the IOC says, sport is a human right, right? And I don't think that we should be forcing people to take exogenous substances in order to be able to compete in the categories that they want to compete. That's that's my... Okay. Yeah. I can see your position now better when you gave the height example. I just think that, um, I don't know, if we're going to value not uh, uh, taking um, uh, PDs in a sport, then it just seems like if there are um, um, un... Well, yeah, but again, we're talking about we're talking about exogenous versus endogenous, right? We're talking about somebody deliberately taking a substance to give them a performative advantage, right? 
which would which would mean that basically everybody in that sport would have to then take that substance otherwise they're just not going to be able to compete it's like one of the major problems with like early bodybuilding and all that sort of shit right that's why so many bodybuilders fucking died because they were like hopped up on steroids all the time i see so the intent kind of something that you think is uh, extremely important sorry the intent the... of the athlete oh the intent uh, no, I don't necessarily think it's the intent. I mean, everybody wants to have that competitive advantage. That's the whole point of training. Um, it's the is the outside influence, right? The pressure, uh, the pressure for somebody to like literally take substances that could could harm them um, in order to uh, in order to be able to compete with other people. Um, and and when the sports organizations say that that is necessary, right? You absolutely must do that, or you can't compete. That's like that's pretty fucked to me, especially if you consider sport a human right in the same way that myself and the IOC do. I I do consider it a human right, but I don't think it's a human right to uh, allow them to or allow anyone to participate in any category they want to. Right? So that's why I believe that. I think this is a justified um, division if if we made. So I said before, like a um, regulated category. Any justified division has to like has to not exclude, right? Because at this point, you're talking about discriminating against trans women in such a way as to make their their ability to compete unviable. Like there just wouldn't be a place for them in in um, in sport if you were to exclude them from these from these cis women's sports. So they're not going to compete against men. And competing against men, I would argue, would be uh, would be an affront to their dignity in general, right? Um, yeah, it would be, yeah, it would be a denial of their it would be a denial of their womanhood. So, um, and and putting them out into a separate category. If you're talking about like a category for like trans women, um, then you'd have very few competitors if you want to do a, com a, a category specifically for trans people um you've got trans men who are allowed to take exogenous testosterone trans women who aren't trans men are going to dominate trans women aren't going to have a place there so whatever you do you're talking about like removing them from sport entirely and so my solution is until they get to that point that destiny was describing earlier where like they're forcing cis women out of sport and cis women can no longer compete in much the same manner um then there's no reason to change the categories okay i guess um i just uh i guess my line um for that would be much or, or closer than yours would be yeah, and what's your justification for like placing the line so low? Well, I just I, I believe that the, the the advantage is beyond. I'm just going to reiterate my same argument that the advantage is beyond what. Yeah, yeah, and then we get back into the height thing and blah blah blah. All right, yeah. fair enough. Okay, well, that's pretty circular. Okay. Good job. You did it without screaming at each other. I'm proud of both of you. Okay. <laughs> hey, I never scream at anybody, Destiny. I'm not a screamer to begin with, so anyone? I'm never a screamer. Are you friends with that Lexi so, person? Uh, what me? Cyber Witch Lexi. Oh, um, we had a massive falling out a while ago, and uh, I, there are, yeah, I don't agree with a lot of the stuff oh, that fine. she says, right, especially right. around anarchism and so on. Okay, this case. All right, Would you well, be willing to come back on again, Vivian? And, and, but, I, but I do know her, and I do have open... Con uh, I'm supposed to be having a conversation with her at some point to try and, like, sort out our differences. Sure. So, okay. Hey, Vivian, would, would you be able to... Or would you want to come back on... I, like, kind of went over this and, and um, thought that I still had my same opinion and kind of thought about it. Would you be willing to have another conversation? Um, yeah, sure. Just, like, hit me up when I'm streaming sometime and we can have, like, a little... 20 minute half an hour conversation or something i won't require you to get destiny to moderate next time <laughs> all right awesome <laughs> i understand why okay. I, I get it. I thank get you it. for hosting destiny yeah, uh, no yeah you thanks, have a destiny. good day all right buddy all right. and uh you too hand the forge have fun yeah have fun. Peace thanks out. you too bye. yeah everybody bye bye wow well, good job we did it holy shit dude i get s okay I think streaming and doing research at the same time is just really, really, really hard. I didn't. I was worried that I was like losing my mind, but I did like reading off stream last night, and it was so much easier um, than trying to do shit on stream with every fucking moron in chat second guessing every fucking thing I say. I have become. I am no longer a materialist, okay, or physicalist. I have 